Welcome back. It's 16 minutes after 1 o'clock. This is the Midday View on ENC ATS TV Channel 403. Currently here on the program, we are discussing the whole uh, process of uh, appointing the next Chief Justice. The President, of course, breaking with tradition last month, announcing that for the first time, South African public can participate in the nomination of candidates, those who might be able to take over from Mukhweng Mukhweng. That process began, we are told, in an announcement by the presidency that uh, there were 25 names. Now that has been whittled down to eight. The process is still underway. From this long list of eight individuals, there will be a short list of three to five uh, to come. I've got a panel of, uh, that, of guests that have joined us. I've got uh, ja the former uh, Constitutional Court Justice, Johan Krichler. I've got Zikona and Lebe. Miss Lebe is from the Judges Matter NGO. And of course, I've got from KSEC, that's the Council for the Advancement of the South African Constitution, Mr. Lawson Naidu. So welcome back. Let's carry on. I want to start with you, Judge Krikla. You are a former Constitutional Court Justice. When you look at these eight names, the process is still underway. People can submit written uh, submissions or make written submissions by up to the 15th of October. Uh, for you, when you look at these names, who should continue to be in the short list, who would you think would be, knowing the Constitutional Court, how it works, knowing the qualities that are required, who should it be? Dan, you know, one of the, my fellow board members of Freedom Under Law, Professor Hugh Corder, wrote a very, very studied, careful article on what the criteria should be for a Chief Justice. But in, in, in just a few words, the person has to be a judge, a, an experienced, competent, good lawyer, a good administrator, a leader of people, a person who can work with other people, who has shown the capacity to lead a court. That means that four of the candidates on this current list do, broadly speaking, qualify. Two of the remainder are disqualified, I would suggest, because of the pending disciplinary proceedings against them. And the two others are disqualified for lack of any judicial experience or any significant judicial experience. So uh, that would be the way I would look at the list if I were a member of the panel. So it should have been a judge in a view and then have a capacity to show that you can lead the judiciary as a whole. So leadership will be important. And of course, the administration of justice itself, being have some excellent management credentials would also be, be important. Uh, what about things like impartiality uh, as type of things, a judge? Well, you, you're forcing me to talk about Judge Schlope, where nobody can challenge the man's intelligence. He has all of the intelligence you need to be a judge. He's proved that. It's a question of integrity, which is even more important than intelligence. You must be a good lawyer, yes, but you must be an honest lawyer. You must be a person whom other people can trust. And I genuinely believe that the findings of the Judicial Conduct Tribunal against Judge Slope disqualify him on that ground alone. What, about, what, about, the... yeah, what, what about the people who also say, and you've mentioned your colleague, uh, Mr. Korda, who wrote recently, you said, uh, about some of the key criteria. I guess one of them would have been around transformation. So the person who's coming in as a chief justice needs to improve the constitutional court and how it works, but in a transformative nature. Dan, I have profound suspicions of the word transformation because it means all things to all people nowadays. Transformation is a very, very slippery concept. It, for one person, it means reviewing the fundamental jurisprudence of the country. For another, it means appointing people of a certain ethnic background instead of people of another, another ethnic background. And I do believe that in the case of the Constitutional Court, the Chief Justice should take a line which will be to improve the 
jurisprudence of that court to improve its production of judgments and to continue to be the leading apex court in the country. Okay, uh, Mr. Ndlebe, let me bring you in there. You, from Judges Matter, uh, your view when you look at these candidates, I mean, who, who should or, or should be given that opportunity to make it to the shortlist? Um, we cannot say for certain who should or should not be given the opportunity to make it to the short list. Again, I, will, I think I'm just going to reiterate what I said before. The PLA panel has, had a criteria, has put in place a criteria. So if any, any of the people that are on the long list meet that criteria, then definitely they should make it to the short list. And um, what, for you, then, for you, as judges matter, what in that criteria is very key to be taken into account when the final decision is being made? We definitely think that integrity is a key issue that needs to be taken into account because, as Judge Krikla has said right now, that you might have the knowledge of the law, you might have the experience, but integrity plays a very vital role when it comes to sitting as a judge, when, especially when you, when you are not only a, a judge but a chief justice because your responsibility uh, are, are more broad, they're extended than when you are just a judge. You are responsible for the constitutional court, you are responsible for the administration of the judiciary, you're responsible for the JSC and its administration, you are representing the country internationally as, a, as the head of the judiciary. So integrity does play a vital role when it comes to who should be the next chief justice. Transformation, is it something to be taken into account by the new chief justice as they take over from Mukwe Mukwe? We do think that transformation is something that should be considered, but transformation should not be limited limited to only race or gender. It is more broad. It's it's broader than that. It looks at LGBTI. Um, um, it looks at other factors as well. A transformation. I think when we look at the candidate, when we look at the people that are on the long list, we we can talk about it in the sense of whether the next chief justice should be a woman, which is something that, as judges matter, we have raised. And it is merely a question whether the next chief justice should be a woman. But the gender on its own does not um, mean that the next, the next chief justice must be a woman. The characteristics that uh, Judge Krikla has, say, has set out uh, are very important. If, 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 it, if it does happen that the next chief justice is a woman, that person needs to possess the characteristics that are needed for a person to be a chief justice, regardless of race or gender. Lawson, you've seen the list. I've asked the other two panelists with me now. Their thoughts around it. You've been listening. And anything to add from your side when you look at these eight, the long list, thank you for putting me right, the long list of the eight names still to be shortlisted later on? Uh, look, a, a couple of comments, Dan. Firstly, I think, you know, this is a, an important position. You know, the Chief Justice, as Econo has just said, uh, plays a number of different roles as the head of the Constitutional Court, as the head of the Judicial Service Commission, uh, as well as the, the head of the Office of the Chief Justice, which is responsible for the administration of the higher courts in, in the country. So it's, a, it's, it's a, a tremendous responsibility that rests on one pers person's shoulders. It is the, the head of one of the three arms of the state in South Africa, alongside the executive and, and parliament. Uh, and, the, you know, the, the person appointed must embrace a range of uh, diverse skills of leadership, of management and administration administration experience, of jurisprudential experience, uh, a collegiality, respect amongst their peers, and respect amongst broad South Africans, because this is the personification of, of the rule of law in, the, in our country, that they, we look up to the Chief Justice to demonstrate that respect for the law. So I think those are, those are important issues. And one aspect I want to uh, also emphasize, and I think um, you know, we've spoken a lot about transformation, but I think the principle of, of a, 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 a commitment to constitutional values is something that must be present in, in the person that is selected. That, uh, uh, you know, an unequivocal support for the, uh, 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 for constitutional values, for the rights in the Bill of Rights, as well as the very uh, transformative nature of the Constitution itself. So I think we mustn't look at the issue of transformation narrowly, but look at it in its broader uh, socioeconomic context. Yeah, all of you have answered my question about the process, saying it's the best process to have happened at this time in our country, and well done to the president for opening it up. The word transparency has been used, public participation has been, has been used. 
Is there anything else you would do differently at this stage, Judge Krikla, in this process? Oh, no, I'm happy with the process as it has been going. I'm happy that the public has an opportunity now to write into the panel. I am sure that the panel will welcome such participation. And that the panel, the, we were a little unhappy that they didn't have any practical lawyers or currently serving judges on the panel. The panel can be guided by other people who write can, can that them. can that we issue can that issue become problematic the fact that there was no sitting no. judge currently on the panel or a former judge no no i don't think so i think that the public participation gives everybody an opportunity to supplement that uh, ostensible lack of a particular perspective Okay. So, uh, Zukorno, sorry, Mr. Leber, from your side, uh, anything else that you would tweak from Judges Matter? Because you've been following this process very closely. Well, there's nothing else that, I, that we would do differently than what has already been done um, by, the, by the PLA panel. We are, I, need, I have to say that we are, um, we are pleased that the panel has come up with a set of criteria that it will consider when compiling the shortlist. And we also think that the JSC, when it does ultimately interview um, the, nomin the, the nominated people to become the next Chief Justice, will also look at that, at that criteria. And we are hoping that the criteria by the PLA Lay panel will be used as um, a basis of a criteria, a written criteria by the JSC that it will use when um, interviewing candidates, obviously with the necessary amendments taken into consideration at the position that the JSC will be interviewing for in the future. But other than that, we are pleased with the PLA panel. Okay. And your side, Lawson, anything to change? Well, the only thing that I would have changed, uh, uh, Dan, is I would have started the process much earlier so that we would have identified a Chief Justice by now and someone who would be ready to take office uh, on Tuesday next week, on the 12th of October, when the position becomes vacant. Yeah, I think the time is an issue there. Should this process the president has set up, which is a precedent, it's a first for South Africa, be used as a blueprint going forward on how the country chooses its Chief Justice? Lawson? Uh, absolutely, and I think the president has acted consistently in this regard. He's uh, adopted a similar process with regards to the appointment of the National Director of Public Prosecutions, as well as the appointment of the Commissioner of the South African Revenue Service. And I would like to see all of these uh, processes being formalized in legislation so that they are uh, uh, examples that are, that are entrenched for the future, because I think they're good for democracy. Yeah, I think, Zikona, you sort of answered that question uh, just now when you said you hope there'll be some lessons taken from this going forward. Judge Krichler, is this the future way of us appointing our Chief Justice? Uh, it, it's, it looks good at the moment. A pity that the JSC didn't do its job, uh, as Lawson has pointed out, that we are in a position where we will be without a Chief Justice for some period of time. It's undesirable, but that's spilt milk. It's no, no point crying about it anymore. Okay, we've got one minute to go. Okay, my producer Peter tells me I've got one minute to go. And you must answer this question. You must answer it, okay? Don't give me your legal, diplomatic, political answer. Please, you are not in court here. We are on, on television. Judge Krichler, who should be the next Chief Justice from these eight names? <laughs> I decline to answer on the basis that it may incriminate. <laughs> <laughs> we are not even at the commission. Uh, as corner, you, the judge has managed to go around the, the, the question. Well, our job as judges matter is not to vouch for any particular person. Our job is to ensure that there's transparency, so I will not be able to answer that question. Lawson? Uh, who am I to differ with Justice Rickler on this one? Yeah, you see, I told my producers that I'll be surprised <laughs> if you guys answered that question. Lawson Naidu, Zikorna Njebe, and uh, Judge Johan Kirchler, thank you very much for your time here this afternoon on the Media View, sharing some of your insights and thoughts. Let's hope, Lawson, as you've said, that time-wise, the deadlines that have been set now for the 15th of October and the end of the month for the shortlist are met so that the president, maybe in the first week of November, can make his decision. Thank you very much for having 
uh, being part of this discussion. Thank you very much. That's Lawson Naidu from the Council for the Advancement of the South African Constitution, former Constitutional Court Justice Johan Kikla, and Ms. Zikona Ngwebe from Judges Matter, ending our panel discussion this hour here on the Midday View on ENCA.